I, I may have mentioned this one time before. You maybe have heard me say it, but I can tell you the very first time I celebrated Mass Adriantum was a Rorate Mass during Advent mm. uh, when the director of religious, the, the DRE of the parish said, Father, will you just celebrate this Rorate Mass Adriantum? And I thought, okay, I'll just keep you happy. Okay, I, I can do this, right? And, the, and so the first time I did it, uh, it was all by candlelight. It was all dark. Sure. Uh, it came time for me to elevate the chalice. Did, have, you, have I told you this story Mm-mm. before? No. Have you heard this? No, I haven't heard it. So so, so you elevate the host, of course. And I came time to elevate the chalice after I had prayed the prayer of consecration. You elevate the chalice, right? And as I held it up, my, my line of sight from my eyes to the top of the chalice was directly under the wound in Christ's side on the mm-hmm. big crucifix in the back. And it was like his blood was dripping into the chalice. Mm-hmm. And in that space of three seconds... I knew I could never not do this again yep. because it was a prayer to our father for the sacrifice of his son, yes. not to be out there looking, Hey, look what I got in yep. my hands. Let's all come have a drink. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. It, it, and that was like 2011, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I was only about three years into it, maybe as, as a priest at this point, since then, I, yeah. So precious few times I've had to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, versus Popolum. But, you see, that's the reverence that comes when all of a sudden you hold up the chalice and you see Jesus' blood dripping into it. Yeah. How could I not? How could I not be reverent? But you see, if you're, if you're turning around the other way and you're facing all the people and it's all, oh, look here what I got in my hands. Yeah. That's not reverent. That's not showing them reverence for what you're doing. Reverence is when you know you're not worthy to hold that chalice. Yeah. That's where the reverence comes from. I know I'm not worthy. Yeah. Uh, but, but. But, but people people get it when they see the reverence you have when you, when you when you know uh, yeah so if, but but you can't get people to you can't get bishops or priests to comprehend that I wouldn't have understood it myself un, until it actually happened and I was willing to these people wanted it this way and so I was willing to go out of my comfort zone I was perfectly capable of celebrating the holy sacrifice of the mass I thought. It was reverent as it was, and I would like to think it was, but uh, because I was willing to serve them in their their need for this reverence, uh, I came to discover what I was not taught, the things they didn't teach you, the stuff, as Michael Morris calls it, that they stole from you. They stole your inheritance, which is exactly what they did. They stole it, and we know that's, a, that's a, there's a commandment against that. Yeah. Uh, but when I held up that chalice for the first time, and his blood was like dripping into it, I thought I I can do this no other way. Uh, one of the profound moments of my life was that three seconds when I went like this, and all of a sudden I saw, oh, here it is. I was drinking. I was going to drink that precious blood. Yes. Wow, profound moment. I there are no words that can describe it. That reminds me. Of, I I learned this about the Pieta of Michelangelo. You know the famous statue, the white yeah. statue. So yeah. I didn't know this. But if you look at it very closely, our, our Lady is much bigger than Christ, proportionally. It's actually out of right. proportion. Michelangelo did that on purpose. And someone explained to me that the Pieta was designed to be an altarpiece above an altar. So Michelangelo designed the dimensions to be from the eyesight of a priest saying Mass below it. And the idea is, if you look at the way Christ is in her dimensions... If you're the priest, when you elevate the host, if that was the altarpiece, it's not just in a museum, it's supposed to be on an altar. As the priest holds up the host, it superimposes Christ on her lap at the pita, falling off on the altar. Like he's slipping down on the altar. And the reason she's bigger is because of the perspective of the priest being below so that it's all in scale. But the whole yes. point of it is, is when the priest is saying mass ad orientum with the, with the pieta right there, is that it's the same phenomenon of of connecting the 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 sacrifice of Christ, the the body of Christ, in line with the host and with the chalice. Right. And when you think about it that way, you're like Michelangelo was a genius. Oh. He was gifted from God. Yeah. He cooperated with the grace. Yep. Yes, that's exactly right. 